How are y'all dickheads doing it as I once again do record coming to you live from the studio in New York City. I'm about to do the farewell to the format today where I uh, crack open my 151 packs of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. We're going to be doing this in more of a, I guess, structured way today. I'm trying it a little bit differently. It's going to be kind of like a podcast, right? Usually I just, uh, nothing really changes here. I, I, in the past, have just talked about my thoughts about the format while opening the packs to fill up my collection. Um, we're going to find out where we were at the beginning of this and where we are, where I am at the end of this. I have a pretty good amount of vault progress and let's let's dive into this while i uh do this i have a set of notes that i do want to cover uh in terms of topics here let me just crack open 10 from the get-go now this is going up before the format's already over uh and there's a reason for that i didn't realize it at the time but i did my last outlaws of thunder junction draft like over a month ago right it was a while ago and i think that that's the case for a lot of you people as well actually just you did it and then modern horizons 3 came to arena and suddenly it was like well looks like i'm jumping ship to Mo modern horizons 3 that was a fun format but you know like this is where we are right this this set sort of ended its tenure and I stopped even drafting Modern Horizons 3 because Bloomboro comes out in, I think, less than two weeks. We're just getting slammed with product. Ah, this might be longer than the Modern Horizons 3 one because I have over 150 packs to crack. We just did 10 right there. Let's do another 10. Um, with regards to collecting this, I'm done, you know? Like, regardless of whether or not my entire collection's filled out or not, I'm done with this set, right? Like, there's an upcoming Arena Direct for this set, which it's weird that that's coming out after this set, like, rotates from the Arena Draft queues, more or less. But it is going to be there, and you can play for two boxes of Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Um, I think the timing's a little bad, because I think that people are not going to be as interested in playing at opening and uh, doing sealed for this set on arena you get to keep the pa uh, cards for your collection but you know at that point it's just like players are going to want the new stuff and i think that the only the, the only people that are going to play that are the degenerate gamblers and um let's see content creators i'm not going to though i don't want any of those cards you know like we've played so much of this i almost feel a little bored of it in a way right um but this is actually one of my favorite formats. I need to be perfectly honest. I really enjoyed Outlaws of Thunder Junction, uh, especially when compared to Murders at Karlov Manor and how fast that format was. Yeah, I like you would die in that format on turn four because your opponent was just the Boros aggro deck. And Modern is supposed to be the turn four format, not Draft. Draft is supposed to be the nice, slow, dirtly format i'm gonna play slow cards i'm gonna get to see what this six drop common creature is like on this board you know um and it was nice it was nice it was actually really nice you, you have like more grindier matches you could find yourself because like fixing was so good in this format in a weird four color soup splashing for like two mythic rares because they got past you pack pack Three, and you were in one of those two colors. Um, Mill. Mill was a playable and winning archetype in draft, which is weird. Um, weird and wild and fantastic. Cruel Ultimatum was playable in this format. It was part of the breaking news bonus sheet. And it wasn't unheard of to see your opponent playing Grixis colors and then suddenly go, Oh yeah, I Cruel Ultimatum you. And in this format, what was nice was that if you had a board, you didn't automatically lose the Cruel Ultimate, unless you were at 5 life. In which case, well, there goes that, right? Um, but if you, they made you sacrifice a creature, there were so many creature tokens in the format, right? And there were ways to play around Cruel Ultimate that it was actually really fun. Um, Villainous Wealth was kind of actually crazy to play against. I 
I think it was resolved against me once, and it's just like, cool, here's six cards that you get to cast for free. Ugh. Ah. Uh. So, regarding the format, though, it didn't feel like it had a real aggro deck, right? Like, red-white didn't feel like uh, a beatdown deck, you know? It just felt like you were playing fair magic. Um, the closest I feel that this format actually had to uh, an aggro deck was actually Black Red Outlaws. And even then, you weren't trying to beat your opponent down so quickly that you would get in over their head, over them, before they uh, assembled their game plan, right? You just sort of hit them, hit them, hit them for like little piddly amounts of damage, and then maybe you finish them off because you played a Mourner Surprise and got back another outlaw while Vile Smasher was out, or something like that. You know, it was like it was this like cute little bit of ping damage that would that would likely kill them, or or maybe they died to uh, what was that one? Uncommon enchantment. Let's see if we could even pull it. Uh. Now, because this set had so many good bomb rares, though, and bomb bomby creatures that would just solo you if you let them live for more than a turn like Rakdos, the Muscle, or like Dust Animus, removal became incredibly important. Um, and whether or not a color was good was det dependent entirely on if it had good removal. Um, green had the best removal, right? And I would hazard to say blue unfortunately had the worst removal. And you'll see that that sort of like is very telling as to whether or not these colors are playable. Green was the best color. By a long shot. By a huge, huge margin. Um, it had everything, essentially. Like, they had the best removal, the best fixing, of course. Um, there were ways to, to get deserts out of your deck because of... Uh, not the Trailblazer, what was it? The Outcast or something, the, the Uncommon. Um, you had... You had the, the mana dork for two that would cut, tap for two mana if it if you were playing a mount off of it, which was insane. It was insane ramp. You can get like a five drop on turn four with that thing, or or even earlier. Green green was just a little bit too pushed. It even had card draw, which was wild for green. Like usually green doesn't get that much card draw. And there was Trash to the Town, which was essentially in a lot of board states, I win combat plus divination at instant speed um you know the removal was so was was too good because throw from the saddle was just amazing even though it was sorcery speed you could make a a, a mount uh permanently larger and then just absolutely body something with it or um betrayal at the vault was just kill two things and a lot of a lot of times green was very very good uh white had amazing removal as well because one of the exile effects you could do at instant speed mystical tether right or crackle with power god um you know bury in the garden which was green white was just ramp and f ramp and removal white had seven exile based removal effects and that was very important right here's two of them journey out journey to nowhere and lasso by the law because of cards like rakdos the muscle that would just get indestructible until end of turn or you could reanimate cards with, I think it was an uncommon, and there was definitely a rare called Rakdos joins up that would just get back. Oh yeah, Outcast the Green Blade. So like, black actually ends up being kind of a close third color, and and you you I based this solely on 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 how they work in terms of color pairs because like green white the color pair for that was the mount deck, and the mount deck was just very very good, and then green black was the graveyard deck, and the graveyard deck in this format was actually very very good too. Old Honest Rutstein being a 3-2 that for three that also grave dig, grave dug, and then made all of your other creatures one cost one generic mana less, essentially functioning as a mana dork on an aggressive body that got you a creature back. That was on some boards, it was a little a little nuts. He did a lot. He did a lot a lot. And you know, like rounding it out, though, and I mentioned it earlier, blue and red. Blue and red were just kind of bad, right? Like Tyrant Scorn is normally a fine card, but you couldn't first pick Tyrant Scorn because you were trying to avoid blue. 
and or red, right? Like Skillstorm Summoner was a great red card and you want to be in red green because of it because the red green color pair was four power creatures ferocious, right? Um, but there were so many bad cards in red. The removal in red was pretty bad because it was it was either too slow, like you had six damage for five mana and then two damage to a token, which sometimes didn't matter. Uh, or there was a Thunder Salvo, which for two mana at base base rate, unless you could chuck a bunch of spells at your opponent, was two mana for two damage. Same thing for um, Slick Shot Sequence, which was a blue and a red for two mana to two damage to anything. And if it was a second spell, if you cast two or more spells this turn, draw a card. The sequencing between those two cards meant that if you wanted to draw the card off a of Slick Shot Sequence, which you did, um, and you, you wanted to cast those two cards in your turn, you want to in, to remove things. You had to aim the Thunder Salvo at something smaller. Um, Blue basically had either the, not the polymorph type things, the passism type effects for removal or the bounce effects. And I've never been a big fan of bounce as a removal spell because they just get to cast it again, right? Like clear shots a lot better. It's just like, oh, that's just dead now. Like I don't have to worry about you casting it again and getting ETB um, value again. It's just gone. And so, like, blue kind of fell behind a lot because the removal was so bad. And then the commons in both blue and red were just sort of lackluster, right? You didn't want to play... Prickly Pear was supposedly a good card until, like, you had three of them. And then you started... You, you played them out and it just didn't feel like it affected the board as much. Despite the fact that this is three mana for a 2-2 two, two on a 1-1. One, one. Uh, you know, Stoic Sphinx... This is like one of the few cards that would pull you very much into blue, and it's double blue, so you can't really splash it, which felt bad. But then it's such a it's a beating because if your opponent can't deal with it at instant speed the turn that you play it at the end of their turn, they're gonna die to a 5-3 flyer. There's there's very little like they probably could have done about that. So that felt bad. And I had this weird revelation decimate was terrible i had this weird revelation where it felt that it was designed in such a way that you would take blue and red cards you would not want to take blue and red cards so, so that blue and red would be very open so that the person that was drawing blue and or drafting blue and red would end up with a disproportionate amount of rares and uncommons because i think that that's the only way that the deck functions between cards like Mal- oh no, sorry, yeah, Malcolm and Breaches, two separate cards. Breaches wants artifacts, and and Malcolm makes disposable clue tokens when you double spell, but they're both rares. So on most boards, because of that, you know, uh, Breaches ends up being a 3-3 uh, a three -three with Menace for three, which isn't terrible, but it's not a first pickable rare. Right? So you just had to find yourself in that color pair. And then and then and then like too many of the creatures on rate in blue and red were just like bad. Uh Lone Shark, even if it drew you a card, it was a 3-4 for four, 4, which didn't feel wonderful. Especially when your opponent in green would play that 4-4 four, four with vigilance for four, that that beaver mount. And it was a mount too, so if you cast throw from the saddle, it became a 5-5 five, five permanently. Uh, Laughing Jasper Flint, amazing card. I didn't get, really get to use it that often. Detention Sphere, another just like... You could splash for this? I don't know if this is actually worth splashing for because white had such good mono color removal even. Let's see. Uh, yeah, and so early on when you were drafting, you, you know, well, as the, sh as, the, as the set shook out, when you were drafting, this card wasn't playable. When you were drafting, you didn't want to see a blue or red bomb. You didn't, unless it was Bonnie Paul, and that's really more of a green bomb, and you just kind of like splash for the two blue that was on there. You didn't want you 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 would pass those up for oh yeah I'll take that common and that doesn't feel great. You you kind of want to play like these these big splashy rares, but the blue cards and the red cards were just so bad, and the synergy wasn't great. Uh, Crown didn't do enough 
right? It was a 2-3 for 4. Maybe it was a 3-4 four for 4 with flying. Maybe if you sequenced properly. Ugh, and in order to get that to work, ugh. Uh, it was too much. It was too much at the same time. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. So I can't really think of any... Um, Oh, and so, oh, go, go back to it. Uh, you would see, like, halfway through pack one, all the cards left were red and blue. Unless somebody got something amazing and they were trying to force it, all the cards would be red and blue. And it would be like, I don't, there's no cards for my colors because I'm trying not to draft red and blue either. It was silly. It was legitimately silly. Uh, I felt, I felt really bad for red and blue. And if you were, if you were, like, a red and blue drafter, you, you didn't feel great because so many of the cards are just like, this doesn't really do enough. Razzle Dazzler as a 1-2. Not not really good enough. Even if you could get the um get it to trigger to make it unblockable like two or three times. It didn't feel great. Vault Buster. Right as a 3-4 with vigilance. Sometimes it's usually a 1-4 with vigilance. But Giant Beaver just exists. Giant Beaver is much bigger. Giant Deadeye Duelist exists, but it's like this isn't good enough. You know, Quilled Charger. This is actually an okay card. This is one of the, the, the those cards that I think was actually okay uh, as a common, but it's a five drop. Uh, you have to compete with Ankle Biter, you know. There were too many, too many very, very not good cards. Grixis was was very good as long as you more or less splashed for your blue things, which is funny because like if you had a Marauding Sphinx, and this is actually one of those blue cards that's actually worth playing. It's double blue. <sighs> Right? Let's see. There were three bonus sheets in this set. I know that the next set doesn't have three bonus sheets. The next set has special guests, and I believe that's it. I Whereas this set had breaking news, it had the big score, which is a set of bonus sheets that were not in every pack. Same thing for the special guests. Again, not in every pack, but you could open packs that had like five rares because of this, this wild, wild nonsense. Uh, for sealed, that would have been amazing, right? Uh, but also, you kind of feel bad for the one, one or two players that only got one rare per pack in their sealed pool, because you almost got as many rares as they did in, in a single pack. Um, I also do not understand why. Well, so the big score was kind of crammed into this set, right? Because allegedly it was an aftermath set. And after, after March of the Machine Aftermath didn't do very well. Oh god, I forgot that Oko was in the set. After March of the Machine Aftermath didn't do particularly well. They realized we can't sell these. We'll just cram them into the packs, which is like nice. Actually, it was nice of them to to, to consider doing that in, instead of like still trying to release it as a product that would just sit on shelves and and make make retailers buy it. Otherwise, they wouldn't sell them in the next set, it's, which they've done in the past. You know, and it feels like blackmail. Uh, but, like, some of those cards just didn't do anything. Like, here, here's one right now. When it enters, exile, target, artifact, or land. So, like, for five mana, destroy, you're likely aiming this at a land. I don't think there were too many artifacts that you cared about too much. And then it has all activated abilities with the exiled card. So this is, like, it could be bad ramp if you destroy your opponent's land, and now this taps for mana. Maybe you could uh, destroy your opponent's bandit sashing, uh, bandit cash, the, the mana rock for three, that unt that got a token every time you committed a crime. I just for five mana, this is bad. You would take the murder over it, or the consuming ashes even. I think the consuming ashes actually, uh, despite the fact that it was double black, this was way better than uh, this is a really good removal spell because it exiled. And exile base removal was very important because, again, Rakdos going, I'm going to give myself indestructible. That was annoying. Uh, whereas red had damage based removal like Skewer the Critics or Trick Shot. <sighs> I feel like they could do better with red, right? Like I was thinking about it to myself and in Wilds of Eldraine, they printed Stone Splitter Bolt. And I feel like they should just have that as like a type of card. That's in every set, but but with the amount of X done and and also bargains because like the amount of damage that you get from from these 
Removal spells in red are just so, so dismal. Trickshot did six. If your opponent had a Spinewoods Armadillo, you, their Spinewoods Armadillo first had Ward 3, so that cost eight at that point. But then it would live through it, which was also just like cut, which I, could you stop having that massive thing? It was, it was frustrating to deal with. Um, so red couldn't deal with like massive threats, which I always feel is like pretty bad. So it's like, well then why did, give red a, uh, an X spell. And they did give red an X spell. They gave red, red hell to pay. Hell to pay is a terrible removal spell. Like you wouldn't first pick it. You would go, oh, that's like pick 10. I could take it, I guess. But you didn't like it. It was terrible. It wasn't a good removal spell. It, it, sure, it could refund you mana in the form of, of a treasure, but what are you going to do with that treasure? By the time you're overpaying that much to kill something, what are you going to do with all that treasure? Uh, I feel like more spells should be shaped, uh, more removal spells in red should be shaped like stone split a splitter bolt. Like this for three mana could do four damage to target creature. They should have said or planeswalker, but it didn't. It to target creature, and if you made removal spells kind of scale like that, right, where it's like it's the mana value minus one, and then you take that number, you do, multiply it by two, and it deals that much damage. That's what you have there: three mana for four damage, right? If this is not going to make sense, I hope it does though. Or you could scale it up to let's see, say four mana, then it deals six damage, right? Which feels fine, um, and then maxing out at like. Five mana for eight damage and i know what you're thinking like whoa 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 eight damage yeah it's a target creature or planeswalker not going to face one two we had shivan meteor in the past as a sorcery that cost five and did 13 damage like it's not it's not unheard of and it's not unreasonable and i feel that red should have some sort of removal that just goes that's too big blow it right up and it just doesn't. And I think that that's, that's like a huge problem with red. Blue was, it, it would bounce things. And then they would play them again later. All right, like that's not enough. Or with, it would it would freeze them down and then, you know, pacifism style effects. And then they would either, they themselves sacrifice those creatures for value or, or still like have some use out of them. It wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough. That's why blue red was terrible. <sighs> Let's see. Sorry to go back into why blue red was terrible. I just, uh, it was just so bad. Black was kind of like middling, but blue and red were just so bad that players treated them like they were radioactive and you felt bad for blue and red. If you were in blue and red though, or blue and or red, you got what you wanted. You 100% got what you wanted. You could think of a card that you would want, like, oh, it would be great if I had a slick shot vault buster and it would be there. Um, you know, I could really use a failed for boarding. There it is. But no one would pass a Beast Bond Outcaster or a Clear Shot or even, my god, Dance of the Tumbleweeds. I really came to respect this card later on in the game because it did so much. You kind of wanted to cast it at its maximum value, right? Get a land and then make a giant token. Sure, if they bounced the token, that felt bad. But one, you, you, you ramped a card. You also fixed your draws a little bit by getting a land out of your deck. Uh, it could be a desert so you could ping them for one as well and then like doing that and then also getting the massive creature out for like six like getting a six six out on turn six didn't feel terrible at all that felt great and this is why like the green just had really good everything you know all up and down the curve at every rarity let's see ah uh... But I did like, I did like that there was so much variation in all these packs. Uh, we're, we're not getting a bonus sheet in Bloomboro, unfortunately, which I think is a real shame because it's a great opportunity to like let players play with cards that have older mechanics that are also still kind of relevant um, to surprise people, to make people feel nostalgic about older cards and, and get to experience them again in a lower powered format such as drafts, because drafts should be like one of the lowest powered formats because it's just the cards that are in these packs, right? Um, and I like draft, I really do. I just, I like it more when it's slow and when we have grindy payoffs, like Dust Animus. Dust Animus was amazing. Oh my God, this is like, if you got this late, you still splashed for it and you would just go like, I'll try to get some deserts and we'll just like plot it out. And, and get like a five, a four, five, 
with Life Link and Flying. God, what a stupid card in draft. Ah. Let's see. Oh, so one big thing that I did not like about this set. I didn't like the setting. I thought it was silly. It's just everybody had a cowboy hat. But on top of that, I don't know why some of these people were there. Rakdos joins up. Thank you for showing up. Why is Rakdos here? Why is Marchesa here? Why is Oko here? Oko makes sense. He's a planeswalker. Never mind. Rakdos, Marchesa, Tiny Bones. It's like, is this Tiny Bones and Bruce Tarl's home plane? I think Tiny Bones is from Innistrad, right? So why why are they here? And then the answer would be Omen Paths. And I hate the concept of the Omen Path, where it's just this giant ass pull of, oh, we we I want that character here. I want, I want, um, I want, uh, let's see, uh, pfft. Agatha from Eldraine. I want her to be an Innistrad. She can make undead soup. And then and then the people eat it, and then suddenly, uh, uh, they turn into Eldrazi? We're bringing the Eldrazi back! They did. Uh, Modern Horizons 3. We'll be doing that next. I have far less packs of that, by the way. You can see right there is only 31 packs. I gotta work on that script. But the... The the setting was so dumb. It's just It's just everybody back with cowboy hats which is something that they did in Karloff Manor that in that set it was everybody but with um detective caps and that was silly uh, everything in this set was just sprayed down hosed down with um spaghetti western juice which gave a lot of them reach which is funny right because they gave them these weird like I think they're called thundercasters they're not guns they're not guns they're thundercasters they're magical um you know and 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 it was just it was just like why is that here why is this here why are they here right on the on the breaking news sheet the bonus sheet we saw the mind slaver and the contagion engine why why like what are those doing here did somebody make a contagion engine actually i could see um i could see uh old honest rutstein making one of those Gitrock monster, why are you here? Who brought you here? You you don't I don't think the Gitrock monster speaks English. How did they convince the Gitrock monster to go through an omen path? Did they trick it? It's just so weird. Um uh, Let's see. Um I felt that the format was great though. Nice, slow, you got to play your cards. I didn't think that there were there was any one card that like broke the format like in modern horizons 3 and we'll get that to that when we talk about modern horizons 3 there was no card that was just like this is terrible and it ruins it, it it it's like it's just bad it's just bad for the format there was nothing like that there were a few cards that were a little salt inducing like uh, a friend of mine complained to me bitterly uh, that he thought that mind slaver was just broken in draft and it's like no it's not i was like it's not you just feel bad because you got got twice by it but I told him, like, if your opponent spends 10 mana on anything, it better win, right? Like, he, he, but he, he didn't want to hear. He's just, he was just like, eh. it's broken. It's like, it's not broken. I had a, you know, like, when you spend that much mana on a card, it should win you the game. And it did win his opponents the game, you know? Um, and you can't really play around it either because not every deck's going to be like, oh, I better hold up Artifact Hate for, for just in case to have Mind Slaver. You know? So, yeah. Let's see. Um, I guess we could do the closing, right? Because uh, we're sort of there. I do, uh, in closing, right? I hope more sets are, 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 are slow like this, right? Look at this card. Reckless Lackey. This has so much text on it. I thought it was going to be fantastic, and it just wasn't. A 1-2 with first strike and haste. That could also sack to draw you a card and create a treasure token. Just wasn't good enough. Can you imagine? Oh god, if this was an Eldraine, it would have been it would have been fantastic, especially with all those um those uh roll tokens. But it just it wasn't good enough here. And that's a common in red. And that's common in red. Um let's see, the fixing was great though. I love when fixing is that common because you get to splash for bomby silly things, you know. Um as opposed to Markov Manor, where 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 um Sorry, Karloff Manor, where all the all the all the fixing was at rare. That felt terrible, right? These these deserts were amazing. They moved the game forward. It, they didn't gain your opponent life.
they lost, I'm sorry, they didn't gain you life, they made your opponent lose life, which committed a crime, which then played into other um, archetypes in the format, which was great. And at the very least, even if you weren't, if you didn't care about co committing crimes at all, one of the mechanics of this set, it just moved the clock forward a little bit. I've seen content creators do it, and I've done it myself, where you just get them to one, you know, so that they think that they're safe, and then you go, desert. And then they're like, ah. You know, and I've drafted this set like close to 50 times. This is why we have 150 packs. It's not the most amount of packs that I've ever opened for a set. I think that was like 180, and that was a. What was it? Um, Dominaria United of all sets. But, you know, I love. I really like this set. I kind of want to go back to it, but at this point, it's just like. You know, I'm opening my packs now, right? Like, it's just, it's too late. It's too late, baby. Ah. But there were so many fun cards. There was so much... Because because of the, the, the three bonus sheets, you were always guessing, like, what could they have? What could they have? What are they going to do here? You know? And so many of the cards were modal between the Spree cards as well as uh, Mystical Tether being able to just be played at instant speed for two more mana, right? Uh, this card having cleave, a mechanic we hadn't seen in three years, just like, oh, yeah, that has cleave, right? Like, I love when they throw older mechanics onto newer cards. And I know, that's still in standard, blah, blah, blah. It's just great to see it again, even though it's just a reprint, right? Throw from the saddle. Absolute best removal spell in this friggin' format. Whereas Raucous Entertainer was just not all that great. Actually, it's just a two mana two, two. Sometimes you made something bigger. But who gave a shit? <laughs> like a lot of times that just that just didn't matter. Buried in the Garden was fantastic. Bruce Tarl was amazing. Um and he's he's part partially red. The the setting felt more of like a meme than anything, right? Uh I, I complained about that a little bit. I it just I don't read I don't read the lore articles or the stories that they publish on the wizard's website. Uh, and so any lore that I do know, I pick up either through osmosis or from like gleaning it from other content creators or just like playing the game. So it's just like oh. this, this just like putting everybody in cowboy hats, much like in the previous, uh, in Karloff Manor. There's the, there's the contagion engine, by the way, that I don't know why it's here. Um, putting cowboy hats on everything seems silly. It felt like it felt like unset lore you know like oh why is jace here it, it there were so many there were so many questions there were so many questions that i had like is is jace ashiok you know like it's so weird but it was a fun set it was a fun set plot was okay i i do like that plot slowed games down a little bit so that you could do more right like plotting this thing felt like the better way to play it simply because it felt like you were going to kill something small and then you would get this out and you were playing for value more of your games felt like you were going for value as opposed to trying to beat your opponent down because there was less there were less cards that were oh yeah yeah um um uh haste in haste in haste in haste in right uh trading creatures felt better combat tricks weren't super good and that's okay Removal was one of the most important things that you could have in your deck simply because the bombs were just too good. They were too good. Right? And so you had to respond to them, otherwise you were dead. A turn to uh, Unicorn, the 2-2 the, the two -two with First Strike and Lifelink that could make Angel tokens. If you couldn't kill that by the time they could mount it, you lost that game. And so you needed to have removal. And, and that's happened to me too, where it's just like, oh yeah, I lose this game. I have no way to deal with this. I don't have a substantial enough blocker and I didn't get a desert stew. Uh, I'm, I am too many turns away from ambush gigapede for that to matter. So, oh boy, you know, <sighs> we're nearing the end of this. I want to thank you for listening. Um, if you enjoyed that, I do stream some of this sometimes. I mostly record it because it's easier to record myself playing the game uh and 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 talking my thoughts out by myself you know it's more chill more relaxed i get super salty because i am so bad at the game sometimes it's like oh i could have done that didn't i and i and i noticed that happening too like when i rewatch my vods and it's like 
Actually, if I did this and then this, that would have just, that would have done both, but it would have only cost me one. We're all learning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dickheads of all ages. Uh, and this has been my farewell to Outlaws of Thunder Junction. 151 packs opened. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this. And if you did, please, you know, hit that like button, that thumbs up button. Maybe uh, give the uh, subscribe to the YouTube, right? Uh, but also, and more importantly for me, because I do a lot of work on Twitch. Come over to twitch.tv slash dickrecord. Link in the description where you can catch the streaming video games, Leathercraft, and other assorted nonsense every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from around 4 to around 8 Eastern Standard Time. Our last rare is a Gold Vein Hydra, which I never drafted. There were so many cards in this set that I just never even drafted this card. I, I remember like going like, one of these days I'm going to draft it, it's going to be killer, and I never got it. I never got this card. Oh god. Uh, according to Untapped, I have 95.9% .9 of the set. My progress on my vault went from 671 to 826. And let's see. Let's see. Uh, continue. Let's see what my... I'm just going to post it up on here, what my untapped stats are. I think I have four of every rare. I think. I think. I don't. Oh, look at that. I'm missing... I'm missing 12 rares and two mythics to even get to like that. Wow. All right. Well, if you enjoyed that, like, share, and subscribe. I'm going to be doing the Modern Horizons 3 one pretty soon. It's going to be a lot shorter because I have a lot less packs of those and a little bit less experience with it. Although I did do a lot of sealed for that format because I was trying to get that in a box. And you know how that goes. If you if you didn't watch those videos, some of them are middling. And then the last one was like, oh, we were so close. Not to bury the lead, but, uh, you know. But yeah, you guys, you guys have a wonderful evening, okay? Or wonderful rest of your day. And I'll try not to stumble on my own words. Have a good evening, folks.